Welcome back to the Funky Poker Vlog. We sit down at the 5-5 table at Hustler Casino. We buy in for $1,000, and we're going to start off the hands with a big blind special, four diamonds, seven of clubs. There's an undergun straddle to $10 of small blind calls, and we're going to throw in an extra $5 chip to come along, and the straddler decides to check his option. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes five, jack, three with two diamonds. It checks around and it made the vlog so you know what the turn is going to be. It's going to be the gutter ball for our straight, the six of clubs. We have the nuts. And this is where it gets even sweeter. The small blind decides to take the lead here. He bets $20. And now we're going to raise for value. We don't need to go too big. We want to protect against flush draws and that is it. And get value from top pairs that might not believe we have anything. So we decide to raise to $80. The straddler decides to get out of there. When it gets to the small blind, he puts in the chips very quickly. When he does this, it feels more like a flush draw or a top pair sort of hand. So that's where we're leaning towards. So when the river comes, the king of spades, when the diamonds brick and the, there's a higher card to the jack, I think we make a big mistake here. When it checks to us, we decide to rip it all in for the rest of the stack, $300. I guess the goal here was to make our hand look like a bluff and have a top pair hero call, but I think we're missing out on a lot of value here. I think we should be going for a semi half pot size bet like $80 because the goal in poker is to extract the max value or to lose the least in each hand you play. Sometimes it's just meant to be and you can't control every hand, but this is a hand I could have gotten more value. So we shove it all in. And the mistake with this is that he can only call with the top of his range. Pocket threes, two pairs like Jack five or King Jack that got lucky on the river. So when we rip it all in, he can fold all sorts of hands. So, and our opponent decides to fold, not surprising, but we do scoop our first hand dealt, which is, just feels great. If you guys are looking for an awesome online experience, join the Cheddar Club, the link's in my bio. Myself and Gildjack Poker play on there all the time. There's PLO, tournaments, low stakes, high stakes, everything you're looking for. Just let them know Funky Punt sent you for a deal. All right, on to the next hand. We look down at Ace, King, and the cutoff. The action folds to me, and we're going to start off with a raise to $20. The button and the small blind come along, so it's a $60 pot, and we're going to king, jack, jack with two clubs. When it checks to me, uh, I'm going to just bet half pot here. Uh, sure, our opponents could have jacks, but uh, I still want to go for value against other kings. Low pocket pairs, straight draws, flush draws, etc. So I bet half pot for 30 bucks. The button calls, and the small blind folds when our head's up. Much more comfortable being heads up than multi-way. And the turn is the six of hearts. So uh, on this blank card, on this blank, I don't think our opponents can have pocket sixes a lot. So this is essentially a blank. So we're going to go for value now against another king and straight draws, flush draws again, like we did on the flop. So we're going to bet $105 in the button. And the button decides to call very fast. I think this is indicative of top pair or a flush draw, maybe a combo draw of some sort. So the pot has now blossomed up to $330. And when the river comes, the 10 of spades, a few weird gutter straight draws get there like queen nine or ace queen. But I discount ace queen because I think our opponent would re-raise, especially in position. So maybe he has a jack and we're, we might be value owning ourselves. Maybe he has pocket tens and he's got a full house now. Um, and I think we're just going to check to our opponent. If he does have a missed club draw, we want to give him room to bluff. So we're just going to go to check call modes. So we check and our opponent checks back. So we, I think we might have missed some value when he turns over king, queen. But I don't think this is a big deal because we're only going to get called by better if we triple barrel this board. And uh, I think we gave our opponent some rope to bluff or go for value that would have value owned himself. So I think we played this right. Don't forget to subscribe and join me on my poker journey and turn on the notification bell to get notified for the next blog post. A few orbits later, I see that the game has died down. There's not as much action. And one thing I'm always looking for is a better game. So we hop around and we find a new spot on a 2-5 table and we buy in for $500. And in that last game, we made a little bit of money. So we're transferring that over to here. This next pot is going to be a big one. We look down at Jack's in late position. Middle position opens up to $15 and we're going to three bet to 45 and then the button comes in for the cold four bet, 115 bucks. It folds to the middle position player. He folds. So now it's on us. What do we want to do here? Do we want to re-raise? Do you want to call? I think flatting here out of position works best. I just sat down. I don't know this player. He's representing Queens plus sometimes ace king. So we're going to tread cautiously. 
We're not even sure if our overpair is going to be good on low boards. So we're, I think we're just set mining, but we will see what happens. So I put in the call. We got a big pot brewing already, and the flop comes 10-10 deuce rainbow. I checked my opponent, and he c-bets for $60. Very, very small. We could raise against this size, but I think we should just call, because sometimes this could be queens, kings, and aces, and we lose all those hands. So I put in the call. The turn is the seven of clubs. I check, and our opponent decides to go all in for $320. Now we're going to go into the tank for a long, long time. What hands are we beating? So right now we're beating all ace-club-x combos. Maybe he's using ace-king offsuit with the ace of clubs or the king of clubs as a blocker representing like a backdoor flush draw slash over pairs and uh that's the only thing that makes sense right now but what's really ringing in my ears right now is the 60 dollars bet on the flop very 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 small a quarter of the pot it is a four bet pot which is fair our opponent seems talented enough to pull off a bluff and that's just a hunch doesn't mean it's the truth and that'll get you uh that'll get you broke in poker sometimes if you trust your hunch too often we lose to everything else though. Ace King and Ace Queen is the only thing that makes sense, and pocket tens is quads. And I doubt our opponent has pocket nines, and we beat that hand. So after around two minutes of tanking, um, I think we're gonna put in the call here. I know we're not beating a lot, but our gut is telling us differently. So we put in the call. Our opponent's not happy. The river's the eight of spades, and he flips over hand that we beat. He shows Ace King with the Ace of Clubs. So our read was right. We did get lucky. I don't think this happens often, but we scooped this $1,000 pot for our first hand at 2-5. And lots more action to come. In this next hand, we're against the same opponent. He's under the gun and raises to $25. And this is a larger sizing, which is definitely in the back of my mind. But some people have an average opening that is 5x. So we just had to raise our premium hand, ace-queen offsuit to 75. And then it gets back to our opponent, and he jams for $515. I don't think we're going to get sticky here, and you know, I try to get info by asking him a question, but he gave me nothing usable. Obviously, we're playing poker, and uh, so yeah, uh, we, we release this hand. We're not getting sticky. Maybe in the past, Mr. Funky Punts would do this, but I would only do that if I had a very strong read. So we release, and we're going to give our opponent $25. Love to get away from it. And the hot streak continues. We look down at pocket aces under the gun. I opened to $20 and middle position, three best, 65. The same opponent as the last hand. So three hands in a row, we battled against the same opponent. And now we're gonna four bet our pocket aces. We make it $165. Our opponent takes a very long time to make his decision, but he decides to call after one minute. And that's a long time at the poker table. Just my two cents. The flop comes six, six, four with two hearts. We do not have the Ace of Hearts in our hands. I think the Ace of Hearts doesn't make a difference right now because I'm putting on my opponent on a strong pocket pair like Jacks or Queens. And that's why he went into the tank for so long. I don't think he's calling Ace-5 suited or Ace-King suited. I think he's ripping that all in pre. And I think he has a low pocket pair. Maybe he has pocket tens too. So on this board texture, I think we're going to have this guy dominate a lot of the time. So we sort of want to just go for value now. We're going to bet $95, just under a third of the pot. And he calls in under 15 seconds or so. I want to take into account how fast he calls, how fast he folds, etc. I think it's just an important detail to have in the back of your mind, not the biggest deal. The turn is the eight of diamonds. Now, I think about this for two minutes, a very long time, and I'm trying to figure out how do I get all the money in versus tens, jacks, queens, ace, x, of hearts. And I think on this eight of diamonds turn, which is not good for me, I think I can check here and give him some rope and let him value own himself with better over pairs against us it might seem a little tricky and risky but i think our opponent's capable of pulling off a big bluff like he did with ace king a few hands prior so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna check and see what he wants to do and he only has around 220 dollars behind so i think if he does have an over pair he's gonna rip it here and we are representing ace highs when we check here that feigning a lot of weakness as well so we sort of want to in induce him to go all in and that's exactly what happens. After 30 seconds, our opponent jams for 220, and I snap call, and I flip him over because it's a trap. And the river is the nine of diamonds, and he mucks slowly, and we scoop a $960 pot, almost a 1000 bucks. And here is my beautiful stack, but uh, it might disappear in the next hand, so get ready. We look down at four, five of spades in middle position. Um, under the gun has the $10 straddle on, and under the gun, two calls. This is gonna be our nemesis and our best friend in the rest of the vlog. This guy is so much fun. 
So kudos to him for uh, just bringing the fun. He calls, um, and now it's on us. In middle position here uh, with 4-5 suited and a limper. I think we're just going to throw this into the squeeze territory. Probably a little wide, but we're going to raise this up to $40. The goal is to get heads up, but that does not happen. Under the gun and under the gun 2, the maniac guy calls. So big pot has blossomed up. And now we're going to flop, which is Jack-10-5. Rainbow. And uh, when it checks to me, I think we're just going to check this back. No reason for us to really bet this board. This hits our opponent's ranges a lot. And uh, no need to uh, bloat it up right now with bottom pair. The turn is pretty magical. It's the four of clubs. And I think this card is great for us because it really hides our two pair and the strength of our hand. So when under the gun bets $70 and then under the gun two goes all in for $300, uh, holy shit, that, that, that's kind of scary. I don't know if we want to have two pair now, do we? So we take, so we just take our time and we, we think about it for a minute or so, but we got to pay this guy off. He's a lot of action and I want to get involved. That's why I like poker, especially with this, uh, with this guy. in. so I put in the call and under the gun folds and our opponent turns over six, seven diamonds before the river comes out. And guess what happens? The river is the three of diamonds. We leave, we lose to a flush and a straight at the same time. And our opponent used his combo draw as a semi bluff and got there and has taken some of my chips. But hey, I'm all here for the action. So let's get on to the next one. We looked at a pocket sevens under the gun two, and we raised it up to $20 and our friend in the big blind comes along, the action player. The flop comes queen, jack, eight with two clubs. Our opponent checks to us and, hey, this guy's opening any two cards and he's in the big blind, he's action. He has like a 70 to 80% V pip. He wants to play and I think we're the guy who has all the over cards here so we're gonna bet we make it $20 and our opponent calls very quickly the turn is the ten of spades not a very good card because a nine now makes a straight but when he checks to me I still think I should be betting all my two pairs for value here and you know I could have the the nine here sometimes as well so I decided to bet $45 here. This will fold out all of his random hands, like, you know, 3-8, ace-8, ace-jack. All those hands that just don't want to continue on this card, I think, can fold here. But when we put this bet out, he calls very quickly. So now I'm ready to give up. Until the river comes, the seven of spades. He checks to me, and what do I do here? We got a crazy player. Do we go for value, or could he be trapping us with a straight? And I think we could be going for value here, but we do not do that. We just had to check back. We don't want to get raised on this board because what if he has a lower set as well? What if he has pocket eight? I mean, I know that sounds so silly, but I just want to keep that in the back of my head. So we just had to check back and our opponent shows ace of spades, jack of diamonds for second pair. So maybe we did miss out on some value, but I'm okay with scooping this pot here, getting lucky on the river. I'm glad that we're playing against the same opponent because it sort of builds a backstory and you guys get to understand how he plays and why he plays. He essentially just wants to gamble and gets in, and he wants to get involved in pots and he wants to hit rivers. That is what he's doing here. He's ready to gamble. So we just want to keep that in the back of our head and sort of tailor our decisions around that. So next hand we looked down at ace 10 offsuit under the gun. I raise it up to $20 in middle position and the big blind calls our good friend. The flop comes ace, queen, queen with two clubs. The big blind checks to me, and I think we should bet here. We have top pair, and uh, the kicker, I think, could play against other smaller aces. So we make it $30, and middle position folds, and the big blind action player calls. The turn is the six of spades. It checks to me, and uh, I think we're going to use an, a special tactic here. We're going to go for an overbet. I think our opponent could have a club draw of some sort, or king 10, jack 10. All those hands that have some sort of straight draw, I think he's going to be involved. So we decided to to bet large we make it $120 and our opponent then decides to go all in okay so what do you guys think he's representing here I think he's representing a queen only and nothing else I don't think he ever has an ace here but he does have like a 95% v-pip so far and he's been raising and showing bluffs non-stop and I just I just can't see myself folding an ace here I just it feels way too strong and, and he could even have a worse ace that he's going for value, right? I know it's sort of contradictory what I said in the beginning, but my, this is how my mind works in the moment. And I wanted you guys to be there along with the ride. So we decided to put in the chips and uh, he flips over a hand that we lose to. Queen of spades, four diamonds. So he's calling with any two cards in his hand. And we're going to be delivering this pot to our friend. Uh, maybe we will win this back. We will see. 
All right, I think we can find the fold in that last hand, but we gotta shake it off. In this next hand, we look down at Ace Jack under the gun. We raise up to twenty dollars, and under the gun, two calls. He has a short stack with around two hundred bucks. Middle position raises to sixty-five, and when it folds to me, I want to consider that this is a small, small raise. And with a person in between calling, you know, we're thinking about he would be like a four X size, like eighty to ninety dollars, but he didn't. So I think there might be some weakness here. We could re-raise sometimes, but if we re-raise and the under the gun two player calls and then the other guy jams, I'm folding. So we're gonna decide to play a little passive and fold to a re-jam if that does happen. So we decide to call and under the gun two calls as well. So now we got a big plot that's ballooned up and we have a marginal hand and the flop actually rewards us. We have Jack eight four with two spades. So we have top pair, top kicker, and it checks to the middle position player and he bets $100, so half pot. This is a hefty bet. I think we should put in the call here and see what Under the Gun 2 wants to do. No reason to raise. And uh, he decides to fold. The turn is the 10 of clubs. I check and our opponent snap checks back. The river is the two of diamonds, so an absolute blink. So this pot is really big. It's around $400, and I just don't know what I'm gonna get called by. Our opponent does not have a jack, because I think he'd be calling that. I don't think our opponent has a jack because he bet that on the turn. I don't think he has an overpair either because he bet that on the turn as well. I think our opponent's leaning towards a hand like pocket nines, maybe pocket sevens, maybe as ace high as well. So we decided to go for a very, very thin bet. And we and if he raises, we're ready to call as well. I bet $50. And our opponent snap calls. And yeah, uh, we flip over the cards and we win. So we extract a little bit of value here. And uh, that felt good. So uh, on to the next hand. Back to the action player. We look down at ace, 10 of diamonds in the middle position. Our friend, he's under the gun, straddled for 10 bucks, and it's on me. I'm gonna raise up to $55. He is the only player to call. So now we're heads up against the action player. Ace, 10 of diamonds, the flop comes jack, jack, six, with one diamond. And our good friend decides to lead for $45. I think what this bet is, is I don't think you have anything, and I'm hoping you're gonna fold to this. So we're gonna put in the call. The pot's around 200 bucks now. The turn's the six of spades and it goes check, check. The river's the three of diamonds. He checks and now it's on me. Do I wanna go for value with ace high? I really don't think so. Especially when the bottom card pairs, he could have a six that just turned into a full house and now he's trapping me. But uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna go for value. So we check back and we win against queen nine offsuit. So our opponent was trying to pull the same sort of place. So he's trying to represent the trips hand like he did with queen four in the past hand, but he's trying to do it with a bluff this time, which is smart. I like this guy. He's doing well. All right, and to not go through this entire hand, but I end up check raising the same action player with four six of hearts on a six high board with a straight draw as well. And he decides to call my all in and we end up chopping. We both end up turning the straight with I have six four hearts and he has six four clubs. So that was a pretty funny hand. And then we're gonna wrap it up with pocket kings for the finale. We just see bet a board and we take down a little pot and that's gonna be the session against our action player. We did end up on a win, which is a plus for me. We cash out for $924 and we're in the game for 800. So that's a profit of 124. So, I mean, I feel like sometimes it's just meant to be. And this session, at least we didn't lose anything and I'm grateful for that. And we have a great vlog in our hands. So I'll see you guys in the next one.